Erev Tov Chavrim. Good evening, friends. I'm Stephen Bernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Yet, uh, very shocking uh, news has just came out by RT that mentions Pentagon paid a PR firm $540 million to make fake terrorist videos. That's the report that they're bringing out. Says the Pentagon paid a UK PR firm a half a billion dollars to create fake terrorist videos in Iraq in a secret propaganda campaign exposed by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. The PR firm Bell Puttinger, uh, known for its array of controversial clients, including the Saudi government and Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet's foundation, worked with the U.S. military to create the propaganda in a secretive operation. The firm reported to the CIA, the National Security Council, and the Pentagon on the project which mandate to portray al-Qaeda al -Qaeda in a negative light and track su suspected sympathizers. Now, you cannot help but wonder, of course, you catch a story here on RT or we'll post it on Israeli News Live on our Facebook page there, but you cannot help but wonder how much propaganda is being that is coming out of uh, out of Syria right now, and we know so from the delegation, the peace delegation that was there in Syria covering the story. Uh, as we see here in this this uh, article right here, this is by the American Herald Tribune. Uh, Henry Lowendorf, who we played here on Israeli News Live already at his when he met there with the United Nations, along with uh, Alfred Martyr, who is the uh, president of the. Um, of the uh, U.S. Peace Council, and uh, and I even had a, a chance to speak a, a little bit uh, by texting anyway on Facebook with uh, with uh, with uh, Vanessa Beely, who is a journalist that was also part of this delegation that traveled to Syria and has seen firsthand many things. And I believe Vanessa has gone much further uh, than what the uh, actual delegation, such as uh, Henry Win Lowendorf and uh, Alfred Martyr went and the other ladies, all the people that were involved in this delegation came back with the same uh, sentiment and that is the West is being fed propaganda like never before. Now notice right here, it says here, patterns have long since emerged. We know that each illegal war of conquest is prefaced by a public relations campaign that demonizes the targeted country's leader and its government. As it lies about on the ground realities, Muammar Gaddafi, for example, was presented to Western media consumers as a lunatic and a despot. The, uh, the Western narratives, however, were contradicted by the fact that he earned broad-based support from the Libyans, all of whom enjoyed public services, services such as free health care and schooling and a high standard of living. The same demonization and campaign is being waged against the uh, hugely popular Dr. Bashar al-Assad, the democratically elected president of Syria. So, uh, and of course, we, we know from what I've played for you guys here from uh, Henry uh, Lowendorf and the things we've shared here already here on this, uh, since the story broke about uh, uh, the propaganda that's being fed to us here uh, in the West is just alarming anything to be able to topple Bashar al-Assad from presidency. And what's it all for in the first place? Is it because that Bashar al-Assad favored uh, the Russian-backed gas pipeline going through his country and not in favor of the West uh, back uh, gas pipeline from Qatar going uh, up into the European Union. I don't really know which one it is, but nonetheless, for some reason, John Kerry uh, in 2011, after he failed to bring about a peace agreement between Israel, uh, Israeli uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu and that of uh, Bashar al-Assad, who President Bashar al-Assad did have an, uh, a, a willing hand to try to make peace with the Israeli government, but got slammed down by Prime Minister Netanyahu, who claimed that he did not trust President Assad uh, in this peace agreement. So it only made matters worse. And the next thing we know, John Kerry turns from being a peacemaker with Syria into actively participating in the overthrow of President Bashar al-Assad. Only makes you wonder. Well, let's take a look at the propaganda that we're speaking about. And I first want to share with you, and this is, this is what's very interesting. Look right here. This is from um, The Guardian, the title of the article, Russia warns U.S. not to intervene as hospital is hit in latest Aleppo blitz. Now, here's what's funny. You get this 
picture here right on your screen and and the first thing that people see is the imagery and and i know when i first saw the the the, the article uh, all i could think of is these kids are walking on the ruins of a hospital but if you're not paying attention to what's underneath there children in the rubble in jarvelis just south of Syria's border in Turkey on Saturday, photographer Andalua Agency Getty's images. Well, it's not even the hospital that's claiming to be hit. And I, I have to thank uh, the journalist Vanessa Beely. Uh, in a little bit of a chat that I did tonight on Facebook, she mentioned to me, because I had the report here ready to speak about these things, and trying to dig through the propaganda of everything to see what's really going on. Well, she pointed to me that indeed, this hospital that we're seeing here, which is in the next report, Syrian report, the bombing of Aleppo's Al Quds Hospital, uh, and that's for that came out today, October the 2nd, is when this is. Notice it right there on your screen. And they're saying that Syrian report, the bombing of Aleppo's Al Quds Hospital. All right, this is exactly what we have right here, but a different picture from Jarvelis, not from Aleppo, by, mind you. And here they're showing another picture. Who knows what it's even a picture of? It looks more like an apartment building than a hospital, but maybe it is the Al Quds Hospital. But they're claiming it was October the 2nd. And Vanessa said to me, look it up. You have about 100 different articles out there that the Al Quds Hospital was already destroyed. Well, she was exactly right. And this is the whole issue about the propaganda. Notice this right here. April 28th, 2016. Months ago. What? Syria. Airstrikes destroy Aleppo's Al Quds Hospital, killing 14. 14 people, including at least two doctors, were killed Wednesday night in the bombing of the hospital supported by Doctors Without Borders. Okay, uh, that's kind of interesting. They, this, this hospital it got hit, and, and according to the article here, it was destroyed. How many times in is this hospital going to be destroyed and the media propaganda coming out of the West? Because in the latest story that we have here, according to The Guardian, now this hospital is destroyed yet once again. I guess during the conflict, somebody must have rebuilt the hospital over the last few months so they could destroy it again. But from what I understand, Let's tell you the real story. What's really going on is the other side, and that is the reason why the fighting is so heavy. And yes, there are civilians being killed, unfortunately. And it has a lot to do with the fact that, one, the U.S.-backed rebels that are, that are in eastern Aleppo right now have been keeping uh, the citizens hostages. They have not been allowing them to, to get out. The Syrian government is trying desperately to get and make corridors for these citizens to get out. Some of them are being threatened that if they leave, they will kill the rest of their families. These are the type of things that are going on. And unfortunately, there is death tolls on both the east and on the western side because the Russians and the Syrians are trying to get uh, control back of this region here because it is their people. And you can actually see that Bashar al-Assad does care. He is trying to get these people out. And we have seen report after report. When you really begin to dig and look for the truth, you can find the truth. And unfortunately, the Syrian people are going through a lot. And obviously, and some of these things that we're seeing here, like this photograph, I watched one photograph that was very odd to me, where you had a bunch of children up there that said, save Aleppo. Is it staged? Is it propaganda or what? Well, you cannot help but wonder, and I can't say that it is or is not, but when you get an article like this, Pentagon paid a PR firm $540 million to make fake terrorist videos. And these images of the children being burned and the, and the blame on the Russian and Syrian government for using incendiary devices. And the more that we dig, the more that we find out that the U.S., one, has admittedly supplied phosphoric weapons to the Saudis and the Saudis having their own intel inside the country. The Turks also have been known to use incendiary devices as well in the past. And of course, they have already come and invaded into, the, into Syria, going through Jarbalus after 
Uh, they built up a little bit of friendship with uh, President Putin there, getting his trust up, saying they were going in to get rid of ISIS, only to find out later they were attacking the Kurds, probably the best fighting force the Syrian government has had on the ground against ISIS in the first place. It's just very sad, guys, to see. We're wading through a huge mound of propaganda. And what's it all for? to justify a war, to justify U.S. intervention to yet once again topple another government, another government that has been elected by the people. If the people don't want Bashar al-Assad as their president, they could vote him out of office. Why not let democracy have a chance? Or we could kind of look to the West right now and wonder, will democracy really get a chance in the United States this election? Maybe or maybe not. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.